Update 1.16 Common Test is live, bringing us, well, not super much new content, some changes to the old maps, uh, there is most likely going to be a new map as well, and the long-awaited Battle Pass actually comes back as well, so many of you guys have been asking, do I have any information about the next Battle Pass, when is it coming, and so on, and it seems like Battle Pass Season 7 already is going to be here with Update 1.16. And they also added a couple vehicles, which I have covered before on the channel uh, for the Super Test players to test out uh, on the public test server. And uh, let's take a look at all of this and even more, actually, because um, another map, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be tested by the players, seems like it, in the upcoming recon mode with Update 1.16, hopefully. So, let's dive right into it. First up, let's take a look at, by the way, this is the... A full article over here. Let's take a look at couple maps changes, what they are going to do. And uh, I'm actually quite excited about the Siegfried line changes. I would like to test it out how it is going to be, definitely. Uh, so, map balance improvements. We improved uh, three random battle maps uh, to address several minor issues we have noticed with uh, them. Check it out. So, Siegfried line, a position with a bunker for the lower team has been added, allowing you uh, to control the field and the passage in the town as you would from the position of the upper team. And that part of the map actually has been changed quite a lot, so this basically is the old Siegfried line we currently have, and uh, mainly, you know, we do not have the bunker, anything over here, but mainly pay attention up here as well, we get extra entry to go up right uh, into the city position basically and as we are going to slide this slider right over here you can see uh, quite a uh, quite the major changes actually you can see extra entry over here to move this um, uh, like how do you call it i don't know gate not gate wall yeah wall actually sorry <laughs> uh, wall a bit uh, more towards the bottom team lower team and extra entry right up over there uh, maybe some major changes, uh, so not major, minor changes up over there as well to have some more room to maneuver. Plus they added a bunker up on this hill and they uh, changed uh, some of the terrain over here. I think this uh, bump is a lot higher now compared to the previous version and uh, longer as well by the way. Uh, so this is the one position and a bit better view about his city area. We have also improved the entrance to the town uh, for the lower team as well as uh, for the north uh, attackers basically in the or as well as for the attackers in assault battles. Uh, assault battle as we all know start from the field and they have to attack the city because the base is uh, at the other side of the city in the middle square basically over there and uh, quite a significant changes over here definitely uh, more artillery cover uh, right over here extra building added and uh, extra entry you know uh, driving through the runes is now smoother okay yes another angle runes this is how they call it <clears throat> the position for defense in the town for the lower team has been improved uh, they added some extra hull down position over here. Uh, this is actually quite a nice thing because many times it was so crowded over here. Like if you have already two tanks over here, even those two tanks couldn't fit behind this little uh, pile of rubble over here. But now a lot uh, more, uh, a lot better position basically. Plus they didn't actually say that but they removed the three uh, over here as well. This tree is no more. Now, they removed this tree, which provided a lot of cover for enemy sniping tank destroyers, actually. Let's say Krulla 15 SDRV. Uh, if you knocked over this tree, you were easily able to stay hidden at least until you took the shot. And with some vehicles, depends where the enemy tanks were, you were able to even stay hidden after taking the shot if you knocked this tree over. So, uh, this uh, for many tanks was actually key position to get some damage, but not the so much anymore. You can still be hidden, uh, but not that easily anymore if you're next to the bunker. Uh, defending versus uh, more aggressive tanks up over there. And the minimap, you can see spawn points have been changed a bit. First, second, and now you only have one. And the enemy team a bit closer to the city, seems like it. Yes, just like that. So, Siegfried line. Honestly, looking forward playing on this map now because uh, many of those changes is what I wanted to see. Is it going to make this uh, map a lot better? Only testing will tell us that. Now, next up, let's move uh, to the Erlenberg. <coughs> 
encounter battles will be unavailable for this map. We also made the following minor adjustments for standard and assault battles on this map to balance the gameplay possibilities for both teams. A part of the building below has been removed to increase communication between the sides. Alright, so this is the old and boom, they simply took this part of the building away. So now you basically have extra room to fight right over here. <clears throat> The house model uh, below has been replaced to minimize long-range firing at those crossing rivers. Yes, pay attention. They made this uh, house a lot taller, basically countering uh, that hilltop snipe into the city. Basically doing that, right? And something was removed also over there, as we can see. Maybe some little minor things. Now over here they added some more hull down position actually. Old, as you can see. And now you can easily be, more easily be hulled down and defend uh, the attackers who are trying to cross the bridge. Like uh, both E3 over here and E3 can do some magical things. E3 can definitely do some magical things. And as I said, in counter battle mode will be unavailable. This is the uh, base, right? Yes, in counter battle base, right up here. So maybe helps it out. Same goes to this old, and they simply added some boom hull down protection. So now, if you are going to push up with your chieftain, with your E3, with your conqueror, with your any hull down tank, basically, you are able to hold uh, off uh, one or two vehicles way more easily being hull down like that. Uh, over here, what you had to do uh, previously was you had to side scrape. So now this <coughs> added over here plus the extra height to the building, extra couple floors, like two floors, yeah now it is a three-story building instead of one, <coughs> you can stay uh, a lot safer defending the attackers who are coming from that side. And next up, Coast Town. Oof. Coast Town, in my humble opinion, needs uh, so many more improvements what they are doing over here, because um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, for me personally, Coast Town, I have seen the most draws on Coast Town. At least the most uh, most thrown out battles happen on Coast Town. Yes, it can be like a 10 uh, versus 10 destroyed tanks, you know, 5 versus 5 at the end of the battle, but uh, trying to get rid of those final 5 tanks, that can be a huge hassle because of uh, that position up there, because of so many bushes, so many uh, easily defendable, like this is... This is so easily defendable map, basically. If it is 5 versus 5 at the end of the game, and whoever makes the first aggressive bush, and if the enemy team wants to be campy, is a bit more campy, it is so easy to outspot everything who is trying to be out in the open field. You have so many bushes, so many bombs to hide behind, uh, like those uh, base defending hills up here as well. It is like, I don't know. It needs definitely some more major changes over here. They just uh, moved the base uh, in the salt battle up into the city. Of course, yes, it makes it a bit easier to cap it. Uh, you have, you can be sneaky behind here, behind there, um, some other uh, positions like behind this rubble over there. You can be a bit uh, more sneaky, uh, protective, defensive with your attacks and uh, trying to cap it. Yeah, but uh, still. I don't know, Coast Town for me is quite uh, not super favorable map, just to be politically correct over here. It's it's trash. For me personally, you may love it, you may like it. For me personally, let's just say outright politically correct over here, garbage, right? Now the following maps now support the assault battles, they added red chair and steps for the assault battle mode as well, and here are the bases uh, next to the fort on red chair and uh, uh, in the southwest on the steps. This is uh, where you have to attack and encounter battle base on steps for example is right up here, and on uh, red chair it is basically the same position, right? Roughly the same position, right up here in the middle of that. Uh, so. Those were the map uh, changes uh, with the upcoming update 1.16. Now let's talk about one of the new maps actually, while we're on the topic talking about maps. Uh, new map Castle for the mode Reconnaissance, Reconnaissance in Force 2022. Is that the recon mode here trying to hint over here? Uh, because this is um, <coughs> uh, the 
translation from Russian to English using Google Translator as always. So it is a bit bigger map for standard battles what we usually see. You know, usually we have the 1000 by 1000 uh, um, size, but this one is 1.1 times 1.1k size actually. So Western, uh, Western Europe, the town of Kassel in Germany. Kassel, Kassel, Kassel. And we actually have a little video to look at it as well. It is uh, more of a city type map. You can see the mini map here. Quite packed with buildings plus open area. Is it going to be tunnel map? Is it not going to be tunnel map once again? It looks... Uh, it looks a city map like no other before. Like if we add the size to it, if we have, if we add the bird's eye view to it at least. Uh, what do you think? Like what does it remind you? For me, may I don't even know. I don't even know what to tell because there are so many open areas and so many houses, uh, tall buildings as well at the same time. And of course the castle up there, like. Wow, okay, something something different maybe, I don't know. Uh, but uh, when is it coming out? Uh, are we able to test it in the recon mode? I hope we are. By the way, this uh, base defending is quite interesting, right? Uh, heavy bushes up over there. And of course, there are going to be so many tank destroyers uh, defending it. Uh, plus, uh, uh, sniping across the little, um, um, like, mini pond. Yeah, mini lake or pond. Uh, is going to be quite a meta play as well. You can see how many sniping pushes there are. And this is what I said in my previous map uh, uh, news episode as well. Every single new map comes with so many obvious camping and sniping pushes. And this slows down the gameplay a lot actually. Um, and this induces camping. Camping inducing, right? You can see that right over here. This is the base defending push, right? Uh, let's actually make it, um, we can make it like two times faster, two times as fast, easily. Like if you, if you win one side, if you win one part of the map, it is quite hard for you to cross it to the other side. Because of all those camping pushes, uh, camping most likely the tank destroyers who are going to be over there. Uh, but we have some bumps over here, yes you're able to get behind this, but then what? Are you going to, are you going through the open field? Are you going to do that? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, getting up over here, if you want the south side, is going to be hard. Uh, where is the main fight going to be? Simply by looking at the minimap, uh, I would say the main fight is going to happen in the west and uh, snipe fest is going to happen next to the bond, right? Or however you call this type of watery thingy in English. Yeah, definitely. I would say the main fight is going to happen over here because you have a way easier time to cross the middle part of the map. For scouts, I would say we we should have something to do over here. Tank destroyers, many positions. Maybe for heavy tanks, it could be quite a frustrating map to play with. Ooh, here is a little tunnel. Mouse definitely doesn't fit under this, I would say. So maybe some uh, tinier light tanks. ELC definitely. When it's going to be fully done in HD quality, I can see this being quite a pretty map. Quite a pretty map indeed, but uh, you know, looks doesn't matter the most in World of Tanks. So especially when we're talking about maps. What matters is how it is going to play, how balanced it is going to be. Yeah, so this is the castle. Castle? How do you pronounce it? Now, next up, let's talk about Battle Pass, or let me just show you a video clip about the styles which are going to be in Battle Pass Season 7. Uh, the special vehicles are going to be Leopard 1, T110 E4 and Kran 1 as well. Now, doesn't E4 have already a special 3D style and Kran 1 as well? Kran 1 has like at least one, the uh, Crane 1 uh, special style, I would say so. So, I don't know. I would, I would add vehicles which doesn't have special 3D styles already because you you would have to choose between them. If I remember correctly, E4 already got something from the Christmas boxes, like maybe maybe last year, not this year, or was that this year as well? 
But yeah, we have so many tier 10 tanks still that doesn't have special 3D styles. So, so now, Grand One, uh, Leopard One. Leopard One also has a special style, uh, especially with the working lamp, right? From the one of the Halloween events. Uh, no, Mirni events, yes, which was kind of a Halloween event as well. But uh, uh, here it is. And uh, right now, I think we do not have any more information about the battle pass uh, if the reward tree is going to happen i am able to cover and if i'm able to cover it i'm going to show it to you in one of the future episodes as well and over here from the patch notes we can see a couple more things for example rank battles the reward screen for selecting pieces of improved equipment unit has been advanced and rank battle season will be available in the test for maternity uh, common test until february 6th so if you, <laughs> if you, for some odd reason, want to test out ranked battles, if you didn't get enough playing time on the live server, then feel free to do that. Uh, then the D1 uh, T44 100, uh, which had the rental version, the special version, the frontline version, you know, all those different versions, uh, the rental tanks basically, all those tanks will be removed and here is going to be a single D44 and all the rewards will be collected into the same uh, vehicle. Uh, on the top of that, they added two vehicles which I have covered on this channel before for the Super Les players to test out uh, the Russian K2, which looks, uh, well, like any other Russian tank. And this one, I'm actually a lot, a lot, a lot more excited. The SHPTK TVP 100 is a tier 8, most likely a premium Czech tank destroyers. Uh, tank destroyer. And to showcase those vehicles uh, a bit uh, closer for you, let's go to the tanks.gg. Uh, 1.16 public test. Let's pick tank destroyer. Let's pick uh, check. And over here we can see there is only one single tank SH uh, uh, PTK TVP 100. It looks, it honestly looks like a tier 8 uh, Hetzer. <laughs> this is how this tank looks like at least. Let's just take a look at this. Let's go to the visual model. And here it is. You know, it reminds me a tier 8 Hetzer, but it is uh, playstyle wise, it is definitely not that. It is a sniper with 2600 DPM, 250 alpha damage, which is, you know, on the lower side, especially for a tier 8 tank destroyer. A very high penetration, very fast reload time, very epic aiming time. Uh, extremely epic accuracy for all those characteristics, of course. Uh, then uh, seems to be disper good uh, dispersion factors as well. So, uh, if like play style wise, uh, play style wise, maybe comparable to E25. Fast firing gun, you know, uh, good mobility because it is going to have good mobility as well. Uh, shell velocity, however, with the standard round, uh, <coughs> sorry, with the standard round is complete crap, and um, for the tank destroyer and uh, with the heat round, it is even more crap, 330 millimeters of penetration though. But of course, guys, keep in mind, everything over here is subject to chains. Uh, 55 kilometers per hour top speed, 20 reverse speed, 21.88 power to weight ratio. So taking aggressive positions in this vehicle is definitely not going to be a problem. The rain resist, uh, resistance number is quite average, minus 6 degrees of gun depression. Um, what else? 20 elevation, 370 meter view range. So if you want to max out your view range, you definitely need to use coated optics. Uh, uh, no armor whatsoever, although the shape, uh, you know, it has some slopiness to it, but whoo, it is a complete easy penetration versus almost any single, every single tank it is going to face. Uh, 1150 hit points. Um, so this is SHPTK TVP 100. Let's see how it ends up being when it uh, hits the live server, most likely anytime soon, right? Uh, next up, the vehicle, uh, the second vehicle I was talking about is uh, a Tier 8 Soviet Russian heavy tank, and oh boy. Just look at this list. We have one, two, let's not count this. Three, four, Tech 3 Tier 8 Soviet Russian heavy tanks. One, two, three, four, let's not count the rental. Five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, ten premium tanks, tier eight Soviet Russian premium tanks right now. We know that object 259A is going to be here anytime soon as well. 
and K2 on the top of that. So this is the vehicle. Horrible gun handling as always. Low penetration, but crazy armor. This tank seems to have quite a crazy armor. Now, if we're going to line it up versus the 196mm of penetration this vehicle has, you can see live model. I mean... Yeah, you're able to penetrate the roof, you're able to overmatch the roof. Roof is completely weak spot to, over here. And maybe it is going to be such a big of a weak spot like, you know, back in the days IS-3 had. And it is not going to be hard tank to take out, uh, especially if you have some height to your vehicle. And you hit all those uh, things right over there, overmatching it, you know, slightly on the higher ground. Easy to hit and so on. But look at the hull versus this um, penetration. You know, this is some tier 10 armor. Like, let's 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 not be joking around over here, right? This is a tier 10 armor. Like, this is basically a Defender 2.0 or a 3.0 or how many Defender 2.0s we already have over here um, <coughs> with a 390 alpha damage, garbage penetration. What is the premium penetration? 270. So definitely looking at this stock penetration. You are going to see this tank spamming uh, heat rounds like absolutely no tomorrow. Players who are going to get it right, bad accuracy, uh, bad aiming time, I would say, definitely 14 second reload time, so DPM, yeah, quite bad as you can see, uh, shell velocity is bad, uh, mobility is trash, uh, the range resistance numbers are under average, uh, crazy armor, 1700 hit points, 350 view range is complete garbage. Like, is this going to be something for me, I don't know, like, it feels to be... It feels to be like uh, uh, otherwise a bit better version of the WZ114, which I definitely do not like as well. What are they going to do with this? Are they simply going to re release it as a pre-boom tank? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not extremely hyped, definitely. Versus heat, versus heat, versus 270. You can see still, still not going to penetrate it easily. You can still hit the roof, commander hatches, a lower plate now. Like, look at this lower plate. What is this? What is this? Holy moly. Ay, caramba. Do we need it? I think not, ladies and gentlemen, especially if we already have 10 in the game and two tanks in works. Tier 8 Soviet Russian premium heavy tanks. Ladies and gentlemen, update 1.16. Right over here, battle pass, map changes. Looking forward to the secret line changes. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. I thank you for your attention. You can consider yourself being informed now. Stay tuned for more episodes, videos on this channel. Much love, stay awesome, stay sexy, take care and bye.